Hi everyone. Okay, let's start it off. Gotta mute the mic. Hi everyone. So I hope you uh, hear me and see me well. Um, this is uh, Gregoire from Greg's Whiskey Guide, and uh, I'm very honored tonight to have. Master Blunder from uh, Hiram Walker. Yeah, thank you for having me today, Greg. Thank you. Pleasure being in Paris. Thank you so much for being there. Uh, Don is not only here for me, but is going to attend Whiskey Life Paris uh, very soon. And uh, he's going to do a masterclass on Sunday. You have the details on and below the, the video. OK. <laughs> um, so um, Don is a. Um, will be answering, answering some of my questions, but also yours in the chat. And um, before I start, I would like to uh, do uh, two th shout outs. Uh, I'm sure uh, that Don is Absolutely. agrees for that Absolutely, because he yeah. knows the guys we're talking about. It's uh, George Kalinecki, who's on Twitter and uh, who's from Canada, Oakville, and provided me a lot of samples like that uh, to help me discover Canadian whiskeys and Don's work on the four brands you have the bottles behind us. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. And also Devin de Cargomo, who is the, the, the most important, I believe, whiskey writer uh, from Canada, uh, who is uh, really very knowledgeable and who uh, did publish Canadian Whiskey, the Portable Expert, which is behind me. Um, I will put maybe the links uh, to find his book, uh, I forgot to do, uh, down below on the, on the, on the comment section so um to start with um to start with a very generic question and apologies for those who knows very well about canadian whiskies but i think we're going to have also viewers uh who are not familiar to it in uh, some uh, maybe uh, summarized uh phrases uh don what would you like to say for people who don't know Canadian whiskey at all, some things that stand out from the other Absolutely. countries. Well, Canadian whiskey certainly has a long history um, of, of whiskey. We started out making whiskey in Canada in the early 1800s. Um, they were from uh, a number of pioneers from many different countries. They came from the United Kingdom. They came from the America. Um, and they developed styles of whiskeys. Um, uh, and distilled different methods uh, to what we, uh, what I like to call is making light traditional Canadian whiskey, like the Weiser's Deluxe on behind me on the shoulder here uh, that you see today. Um, but Canadian whiskey did evolve in, in a, in, through the uh, prohibition and into the 1930s where they started laying down the definition of what Canadian whiskey is. And Canadian whiskey has to be made of grain, like all whiskey categories do, has to be fermented, aged, and distilled in Canada aged in uh, wooden barrels of less than 700 liters and a minimum of 40 percent alcohol there are many times greg where well, people will ask me about canadian whiskey and i often make the comment that canadian whiskey is the most innovative adaptable style of whiskey there is they, they don't tell me i have to make a mash bill uh like other whiskey categories they don't tell me how to distill it and and i i do distill our whiskeys um using column stills or pot stills and they don't tell me the barrel type i have to use we can use use the barrels over and over again. We can use brand new barrels. We can use wine barrels, many different types of barrels. And I really believe that makes Canadian whiskey diverse. And I think it matches Canada as a nation. And it's a fun whiskey category to play with. I wouldn't want to be a master blender anywhere else in the world other than, than in the Canadian whiskey category, Greg. Yeah, this I can understand, and uh, I was going to answer uh, to uh, Anthony and Nikki uh, Hi guys, uh, yeah, sure. You should add to your uh, wish list uh, lot forty. Uh, I can be a bit biased here, but you know, before even meeting uh, Don, I was writing uh, about uh, Canadian whiskies. He was uh, working on uh, because of the samples I've received, and they very uh, much impressed me. So I I wrote a whole topic on my website. If people want to see and more, learn a bit more. Uh, of course, I advise them to to uh, get the the, the book uh, from David de Cargomo. 
but uh, yeah, so basically it's another way of making whiskey. Um, I, I might add to it, but but I, I would like to say is Canadian whiskey is a little bit opposite of bourbon, um, where we have, for the most part, the larger distillers in Canada will ferment each of the grains separately. They'll ferment corn separately, rye separately, barley separately, wheat separately. There's people that will even do 100% malt separately. We'll distill it separately. We age it separately. And then we put it together at the end uh, as a recipe. And that's why... I, that's why when we talk about Canadian whiskey producers, there's a master blender. Because we're trying to draw in flavors from many of the places where you can bring in flavors from, um, whether it be from the grain, where rye gives you that big, bold spiciness, or, or malt gives you that nice breadiness to the whiskey. Um, and that's what I think about at night. Or or we can bring in, in different flavors by how we distill. Uh, a single column still, you'll keep all the flavors. That comes from the yeast or from the grain. That's how bourbon is made. But at the same time, we can double the still through two column stills to make light, smooth whiskey. And uh, a lot of your Canadian whiskeys are blended with that double the still. And, and a lot of Scotch, blended Scotch drinkers would understand that as grain whiskey. Same thing. Yeah. And we also use pot stills. And what pot stills do is really concentrate up your flavors in your whiskey. So there, there's many different methods. And I, I always say distillation shapes your whiskey. So you can pull out your flavors or remove the flavors or concentrate them up just by the, the choice of distillation or the grain that you start with. Um, this leads me directly to my second question. That's good. Thanks, yeah. Dan. But before that, I would like to uh, scroll down a bit because we had some issues to get in the live. So I would like to thank very much uh, our viewers, Luna Aaron. Thank you so much for being there. Uh, prohibition in Canada. Yeah, you have to ask this one. We'll talk about that if you like. Uh, and uh, Guillaume, thank you so much to be there. And I hope to get your, it's another story parcel very soon. Uh, yeah, the cast shrink is amazing. Uh, I don't have it here because it's not on sale here. It's difficult to get. Come but... visit me in Whiskey Live tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, on Sunday and we'll, we should have samples uh, of it. Uh, if you're hearing. <laughs> uh, and then uh, Anthony and Nikki from New Gen Drinker, awesome channel. Um, and uh, also, yeah, I'd like to chat with you for sure <laughs> and go visit you, uh, Anthony and Nikki. And so, uh, hi everyone. Uh, go Habs also. Uh, yeah. Fellow Canadian. Fellow Canadian, yes. you, you, you're named. I learned that by the the team that Don prefers from uh, the hockey. Uh, of course. Um, yeah, Luna asked if the M. What is the M? Is really accessible in Europe? Uh, oh no, the cast string. No, unfortunately, no. But no, the no the cast. Uh, we're getting lots of strength, uh, questions about the lot forty cast string. Yeah. Um, Lot 40 was a brand that was originally uh, designed in 1998 by my predecessor. Uh, uh, the previous master blender was Mike Booth, and the name Lot 40 uh, comes from his ancestors. So when his great-great-grandfather came in, uh, into Canada, they were giving out plots of land to people, and he happened to get Lot number 40, and he was a whiskey distiller. Um, so Mike, uh, when he made the, the brand Lot 40, uh, wanted to pay recognition and homage to his, his uh, great great grandfather, and that's where it started. Now, the original brand in 1998 was not 100% rye. Uh, it, it was a little bit of a blend of, of different things, and it was not aged in brand new virgin oak barrels. So, if anyone has a bottle, original bottle from 1998, mm -hmm. uh, it is a little bit different than what you would see in the bottle today. Um, when I became the master blender in 2012, I I took the brand and and uh, and and decided to make some changes around it. So when I did my PhD in brewing and distilling, it was around how wood interacts with with the whiskey. And one of the first changes we made with Lot 40 uh, was to uh, age it in brand new virgin oak barrels because rye gives you that beautiful bold spiciness in Canadian whiskey. And I felt that it balanced well with the brand new virgin oak barrels. That that so you get that sweetness, that vanilla. Caramel, Hi, soft Stephen. Notes. Yes, yeah, that's caramel toffee notes in the whiskey. So that was one of the changes uh, that we made with Lot 40. Along the ways as well is we actually removed the rye malt that was originally in it. I found malt, if anyone that follows my whiskey wheel here, um, 
malt sometimes gives you an interesting vegetable a nuance to your uh, whiskeys. And uh, one of the changes we did as well was pull out the rye malt and turn it into 100% rye uh, whiskey. Um, so that added even more to the spiciness we're looking for. Ever since we did that change, uh, this this brand started winning uh, Canadian Whiskey of the Year several times. My philosophy is this, um, and I think it was one of the questions I was pre-asked uh, before the, the uh, feed here yeah. tonight, and has Lot 40 changed? Yeah, I'm people, a, sorry, Don, yeah. people, uh, Luna and New Drum Drinker, uh, who might not know uh, in depth uh, the, the, the process of the Lot 40, sure. ask maybe in simple words, how it is made now. Okay. How it's I made, yeah. To know. I get that great question. I love people <laughs> leading and leading where it's going. So the change <laughs> we made to Lot 40 is it's now 100% rye because I want to dial up that spiciness. So we removed that rye malt on it. It's column and then pot distilled. by distil Distilling by that manner really focuses up that, that rye that we're looking for, and it's aged in brand new virgin oak barrels. Those are the three staples uh, to Lot 40. And to answer the question, has Lodge 40 changed through the years? Yes. I'm not a person that stands still. I will always want to and strive to make whiskey taste better. If I think there needs to be a change in a brand to, to be better, and, and uh, I'm always looking uh, for that edge because the moment you stand still, I think is the moment that somebody's going to pass you. And I think it has shown in this in the awards that we've won uh, with, the, with the brand uh, Lodge 40. It's an excellent whiskey. 100% rye. Um, we know how to ferment rye. We often will get the question that is it very difficult to use rye? In Canadian whiskey, we're allowed to use enzymes, commercial enzymes. We have for over 50, 50 60 years. Um, and if you know the right cocktail to put together, it's easy to process the grain rye and distill it. Uh, and, and we've refined that through the years so, as well. So for people to understand, enzyme <clears throat> is different from the yeast. It's different from the yeast. Yeah, because yeah. basically whiskey, uh, if we take Scotch whiskey, uh, it's uh, yeast, barley, water, uh, and bar, uh, yeah. barley malt. Barley malt, yeah. malted barley, and uh, the aging in casks. Yeah. yeah. So what enzymes are is a, a the way the distillers had figured out. In fact, Hiram Walker has a patent on how they make enzymes way back in the 1970s, actually. It was one of the first jobs I did as a, as a distiller was to manage how these enzymes are right. But it's another way we can use to break down starch. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking for as whiskey producers. In, a, in the grain, let's put it this way. Starch is 10,000 molecules of sugar all put together. Yeast can't eat starch. Okay. It's too big. It's like a T-bone steak. If you went to the restaurant tonight and you had a, a steak, could you put the whole piece of steak in your mouth and eat it at one time? No, no, you can't. So you got to cut it up. So what enzymes either come from malt or you can commercially make them okay. uh, to be able to cut apart the starch in order for the, the yeast to eat the sugar. Now, don't get me started on yeast. Okay, because, okay. I mean, because uh, we've got a lot of questions. <laughs> yes. so, um, now yes, Luna asked for an, an original interesting question yeah. that uh, leads me to something I didn't mention. Uh, is that uh, Don Livermore, which we should call Dr. Don, is one of the very rare today uh, people who has a PhD. Uh, uh, maybe you can. I, yes, I, uh, my first degree when I got started at the Hiram Walker Distillery was in microbiology. That's, I was the guy that looked at yeast cells under a microscope for many years. Um, the company was fantastic to me. Um, they they spent the money and hmm. and they I went to school and did my master's of science in brewing and distilling at Harriet Watts University. That's in Edinburgh, Scotland. And then uh, in 2012, I finished my PhD in brewing and distilling at Harriet Watt University. My thesis was on uh, calibrating infrared sensors to measure the inside of a whiskey barrel. I could predict what, how much wood is going to come into your whiskey in 30 seconds over three years of aging. Um, that's the, so was my thesis on. I know it might be outside this audience, but I no, mean... No, I know it's very technical. <laughs> but it's one no. of the things I like to say is, and it comes back to this whiskey wheel. Thanks, John. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, Don created this, which is uh, specific to Canadian whiskey. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I encourage your audience to, 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 to search me up online. Um, yeah. I'm at cdnwhiskeydoc on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. But what this wheel is a little bit different than what you would see in most whiskey wheels, which what people would normally uh, look at. It all starts this in the center of this wheel here. Yeah, sorry, just this is uh, where we don't see it much. 
you can have it online. Uh, if you look at Diageo uh, tasting wheel, it will look very differently. Uh, yeah. Story doesn't show much on camera. Yeah, there's many and whiskey wheels you'll see online, yeah. and and I and I I, I designed this. This is trademarked in 170 different countries, and when I go to whiskey fest, people are grabbing these uh, by the dozens because it explains. Yeah. And my friend Dave Broom called this a distillery cheat sheet, and really, flavor for whiskey only comes from three places. It either comes from the grain, the wood, or the yeast. Yeast gives you the green grass, fruity, floral. Uh, sulfur notes uh, in your whiskey. Grain, you can bring in grain from the rye, the malt, uh, the barley, the wheat, and the barrel. We can burn a certain way or we can finish whiskeys in certain type of casks or we can age it. There's a third ring on this whiskey wheel. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. There's a third ring on this wheel, which will describe the flavor compound mm. or what they are. Vanilla, caramel, toffee, banana, pear. That's what you traditionally see in flavor wheels. But the cool thing about this wheel the outside ring yeah because usually this primary secondary and tertiary yeah right? the outside ring is the chemical four. compound that causes this flavor <laughs> sorry guys if it's too technical <laughs> it, it, it is and i encourage you to look it up uh, if, yeah. you, if you really want to dial up spice in the whiskey and i'll often say this in whiskey tastings don't ask me how much rise in my whiskey. We, we will drink the stuff. We will drink, <laughs> we will drink some stuff. complaining. With. Ask me how much more ethyl guy was in my whiskey. <laughs> we will so drink. I tell people. Uh, meanwhile, there's a question from Luna, which is uh, yes, interesting, and I have no idea. Uh, is your PhD uh, available somewhere online or else? And is it understandable by someone who's not? Scientific. It's, uh, it's a question. Uh, the, the very good question. It's available through Harriet Watt University. Um, it's published there, and it's accessible by it. Um, and what I would say, if you're the the very introduction to my uh, PhD would be worthwhile read. It describes how wood interacts with your whiskey. If you really want to know what a barrel does to whiskey and how it's it's a very good read i have a lot of people comment on, no, on, on reading, read that. That, reading that so guillaume we are drinking lot 40 the regular one uh we may uh, try other things later on so cheers to everyone cheers, watching guillaume and to everyone guillaume. cheers a is what we say in canada <laughs> yes the a is for what well most canadians end their sentences in the word a so we go cheers a oh <laughs> good cheers everyone Whoa. If, the nose is crazy already. And with, with La 40 right away, the nose, the rye just punches right at you. It's that spiciness that you're looking for. Um, it's got that ginger note to it. Uh, it's you got the cloves. Do you agree on heady flowers? As very well? floral. Very, this very floral. It stands out, I think, from other ryes. Yes. So if you want to know where floral notes come from, it's uh, by how we pot distill this. Because oh. the floral yeah. notes will come in from the yeast, and we know exactly the boiling point of those those flavor compounds that I talk about on this whiskey wheel, and we can and concentrate those flavors up. So uh, sorry, so to, uh, for me to understand well, and maybe for the audience, yep. the American rye most of the time are not distilled in pot still. That's what you mean. That's correct. Most oh, American okay. ryes are just uh, column distilled, like so how most. Doesn't mean they're made. bad. No, that doesn't mean it's bad at all. <laughs> If you want the real high level uh, on the difference between pot stills and column stills, it's this. Cheers, guys. When you column distill, and you pass your grain mash through that, that long column still, you keep the grain flavor you're using. In this case, it's rye. You keep the fruity, floral, green grass, soapy notes the yeast has made. What the column still will do is pull out any sulfur notes. Oh, okay. A lot of us like to do this on bottles. Copper distilled, copper pot distilled. I'm going to let you on a little secret. It's a marketing secret. We all use copper stills we have for 10 centuries in order to salt out the sulfur. Uh -uh. Or you're going to have skunky whiskey. But a column still keeps all your flavors, minus the sulfur. We do one added step with Lot 40s. We take that distillate from the column still. We then boil it into a pot still. If you slowly boil it. So it's a double distillation as well. It is It is a double, but don't yeah. get confused okay, by that. Okay. Distilling shapes your whiskey a little bit. When you slowly boil in a pot still, the yeah, flavors come out in this order. A bit like, sorry, Loch Lomond does, no? In some whiskeys, I think they use the both. Uh, they may. I, I'm not familiar, familiar yeah, with for, Loch Lomond. For some brands of Loch Lomond, not for all. But what we find is when you do the column and then 
and then do a pot still, crazy it comes this. in this order. The green grass notes, the raw character that you don't like in Moonshine comes off. The, that's the heads. Yeah. That's the heads. We cut it. We throw it away. What comes out and that comes in this order. If you come to visit me, I'll, I'll show you. Fruity flavors comes next. Then the floral flavors. Mm -hmm. And then the grain flavor you're using. After 12 hours of boiling in a pot still, we stop the distillation. What's left in the pot is the soapy flavors. That's the tails. We cut it. We throw yeah. it away. So yeah, that, that pot still will concentrate yeah. up the fruity the floral mm. and the rye flavors and that's what makes lot 40 very very unique no i love the the I've bouquet made, is fantastic yeah, i have yeah the rye the spiciness but also i have some peony and rose maybe it's only me but <laughs> i call it lilac but uh, yeah. that's that was my my um childhood experience uh, is that that and right away i, I will look at that in, in lot 40. and also some rosewood as the oak is very uh Beautiful. Special. Now we we normally sit this at forty three percent. Now, yep. rule of thumb, and I mean this is generality, but rule of thumb, at higher strength alcohol, you're going to get more grain and woodier flavors coming out. At lower strength, they see you're adding water. Yeah, you're going to get the fruity and floral so. notes will start popping out uh, even more. It's a choice. So since this is a rye whiskey and we want to emphasize rye. Why not keep the strength a little higher? So we yeah. kept it off uh, the minimum of 40%. So this sits at 43% ABV. Those people that like the cash strength lot 40 out there, um, depending it's, which, yeah, depending which year we have, mm -hmm. it gets up to 55, um, 58, uh, 57. Um, it gets, and you're going to get more of that spicy note, more of that woodier note at the higher strength uh, alcohol. That was my uh, whiskey of the year, by the way. The, the cast strength. 40 cast strength. <laughs> Guys. Yes. And uh, yeah, I, we can give a tip maybe to people. I had previous prior to the live stream about availability. Yeah, availability. Yes. So, the new yeah, cast so, so just as a history <laughs> lesson on cast strength law 40, we released that uh, uh, two years ago. Uh, this is now the third year. Two years ago, we released a 12-year-old um, uh, whiskey. Um, it was so popular, it went like that in, in Canada only. Uh, we released an 11-year. Um, so this year, I wanted to change it up a little bit. Um, this year, we took the age statement off because we wanted to focus on um, just something different with it, something we've been playing with. If anybody wants to have the opportunity to learn how to blend oh, yeah. whiskey with me. I saw a video. <laughs> yes. Listen to him. <laughs> if, you, if you want to learn blend, go to jpweiserstour.ca. jpweiserstour.ca. And what I do for consumers is I line up 150 different things I make at my distillery. It's crazy. We go through that. each sample and you get to blend your own whiskey. And the feedback from it I get from people is awesome. I get to learn how to blend whiskey. Oh. The most popular ingredient this year was lot 40 aged in French oak. I, I know I, I pick up the bottle. This. People want when they're making their own blends, they mm. would pick up a bottle of a, of uh, the cast strength lot 40 that was aged in French oak, and they they thought it was awesome. They said, "Why aren't you releasing this as a brand?" So that's what we did this year for uh, the 2019 version of the cast strength lot 40 is what we aged in French oak. And I find the, because French oak has a high vanilla character yeah. to it, balances very nicely with that. some spices as well. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you get the, you know, you get the eugenol and, and clove to it. We got a question. So. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> that's what we're and seeing can... this year. And to the question that was asked before on the pricing of it, it's going to be priced around $80, depending where you are in Canada. And uh, 250 cases are going to be in Canada. And this is the first year we're launching 50 cases inside the U.S. market. And the international uh, pe uh, people that are in the audience tonight, there will be bottles available on the Whiskey Exchange. So if you want to get it through Whiskey Exchange. Whiskey Exchange. Um, we got some questions from Luna and Guillaume, G2VM. Um, Luna asks if the heads or tails are discarded in Canadian whiskey. Because Scotch, it's well, I yeah, they recycle. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Greg and I talked about that uh, on uh, before, before we went on camera. For us, uh, because we have the 
many different styles of how we distill. Our heads and tails will actually go back into our column still. And the co we, we do double distill whiskey to make light grain whiskey. So it'll eventually make its way into there and we'd actually just pull out a fuse oil and ester draw and we actually uh, sell those things. So it does not go back into the pot still if that's what you're thinking. Okay. Yeah, it's yes, what we yeah. said before. Yeah, we'll um, go back into the column stills for us. So it's very busy. Yeah. Um, uh, and I've got all these questions, <laughs> mind you. We're on um, question two. <laughs> yeah, 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 only. Um, Guillaume asks, does the rye comes from Alberta? Uh, Southern Ontario. We actually get a lot of our okay. rye on the north shore of Lake Erie. I don't know if he's, Guillaume is Canadian. Uh, but no, he's Belgium. Belgium. So Belgium. if you look at the map, it's it's Lake Erie is uh, the southerly most great lake, um, and it gets high winds. So the soil around that region uh, mm -hmm. is very, very sandy, and that's the uh, tobacco region of Canada. Um, so when they harvest the tobacco, um, they need to plant what they call as a cover crop, which is rye. Rye will grow in hardy conditions. It'll grow in that sandy soil. I actually talked to Canada's top agronomist. They've tried to grow barley there. They've tried to grow wheat there. It just does not grow very well. Oh, yes. But rye, rye is very hardy. So, um, so that's where we will get. And we're not very far. We're about 100 miles from that location. And, uh, but that's where we'll get most of our rye from. Okay, I've got another question. Great question. Great Sorry. question. Yeah. Um, New Drum Drinker wants to know where can they get sorry don's uh flavor wheel maybe on your website on the website of the company or yes yeah, so you, you can uh approach me on my cdn whiskey uh doc on instagram and we'll make sure we can get you a copy of yeah, it yeah they're on instagram too yeah okay instagram or, or twitter direct yeah. message me and i can make I'm, sure you can get a copy of it thank you i'm yeah. gonna try to put my questions at the same time <laughs> um yeah it was related what we say before with differences between oh maybe add that sorry. to do if you go to dave broom on scotchwhiskey.com as oh. well Dave has this published. He published it maybe a year ago on his website. You might have to dig for a little bit, but he you can certainly see a copy on Dave's website as well on scotchwhiskey.com. Good tip. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I uh, have a question. Yeah, we talked about it before, but uh, would you agree that there are some proximity in the spirit of blending between Canadian whiskies and Japanese whiskies, for instance, as some methods of production seem to be close? Uh, especially in Nika and Suntories, the ba Master Blenders works with a, a wide array of, uh, uh, of different bat batches and different types of distilling, charging of the steels, uh, shape of steels, etc. So, from what you describe, it's very similar to Canadian whiskey. I, I think um, I, th I think that the Japanese style uh, is very different. Uh, in one regards, I think, is where they can uh, get their spirits from. Ours has to be fermented, aged, and distilled in Canada. Um, Smoker. But, but at the same time, we do have different ways. That it, they don't tell us the method of distillation in our... So it leaves it up to me. <laughs> I, I want to be creative. And, I, and so we can distill and age in different types of barrels. And, and I do that. I mean, I, I want to... I, I want to make whiskey for you. I want to make whiskey for you. I want to make whiskey <laughs> for you. And everybody's taste pro profile is different. And I think, I think we're very similar in a sense. But maybe the regulation around where it has to be produced might be the one difference between our two styles of whiskey. Well, there's some jokes here that the question might be answered tomorrow morning. <laughs> we're gonna try to keep up the the things as much as <laughs> okay. possible, guys. <laughs> Cheers for your patience as well. Hmm. Okay, sorry. Uh, among next things I wanted to ask is, I recently learned there were um, many types of corns. I thought there was only one or two, but I read sweet corn, field corn, unpopped popcorn, hominy, etc. How do you think those different types of corn uh, influence the taste of the whiskey? And is it a relevant question or, or, or not? I would say it's probably not a relevant question. Um, sweet corn is what you would, what we often in, in North America call corn on a cob. They don't let it dry to the point where we can actually mill it. Popcorn is very small beads uh, of that's, uh, that's not used in our industry. Now I have looked at corn that they call yellow corn. That's what we typically use in our, our and that gives you that nice sweet uh, sweetness uh, to your whiskey. Um, I have played with um, white corn, which goes into tacos or oh. taco shells, right? 
and there's a, a, I think there's a whiskey producer out there that uses blue corn. I've seen it. And yeah, that's, that, that makes, yeah, that's one of the questions that's yeah. after um, about for me, for me personally, when we use corn in our whiskeys, we will distill once through a column still and then twice through a column still. And we'll get up to 94.5% alcohol. And I can make it from corn, wheat, rye, barley, and you couldn't tell the spirit where it came from. Oh, that's so when you double distill through two to make... Uh, so there's a loss, you mean? Between yeah, you the lose your grain flavor okay. when you distill twice. I that's why that. I often will say in whiskey tastings, ask me how it was distilled. That mm. is more the pertinent question because you can strip out all the flavor of your grain based on how you distill it. And there was a... Sorry, the yeah. next question... Of, uh, about yeast because uh, oh, what is this don't get me started oh, okay, okay. <laughs> don't get, I, I actually okay. believe yeast is the most important thing to make there you go because why uh, asked, go back to my yeah. whiskey wheel again why yeast is that, the heart long, because <laughs> well, it's another question that's uh, later on on the but never mind um because i'm disappointed having discovered that there's different variety of yeast at mm -hmm. least distillery yeast and brewery yeast yeah. are under your control. I'm um, talking. Yeah. While yes, the Scottish yes. industry doesn't seem to work uh, anything than uh, prepared in advance, unique, almost I, unique kind of distillery I, yeast for every distillery. Yeah, you get, you're getting me started. But Except the crafted <laughs> ones. Yeah, I, I mean, yeast is the most important thing. And, and there, I know there's many websites out there that say wood contributes wood, yeah. the most flavor to your whiskey. That's absolutely not true. Uh, you look at this bottle, 43% of it comes from yeast. Uh, that's the alcohol itself. Um, that alone should tell you yeast is the most important. Uh, and it's the heartbeat. It makes your flavors. It makes your fruity, floral, green, yeah, green it's soapy so notes. Yeah. And if your heartbeat doesn't go right, if your fermentations don't go right, then your distillations won't go right, then each in your spirit will not go right. It has to start with good fermentation. If you do not ferment correctly, mm. you're going to make poor quality whiskey. Um, unfortunately, as whiskey producers, we do not tell that story very well. If I went to the corner bar bar here and sat on a bar stool, although my French isn't very good for Paris, but uh, <laughs> if I sat on a bar stool and started talking about yeast with somebody, they wouldn't care. Um, you could talk about yeast with wine, you could talk about it with tequilas or anything, but us as whiskey producers don't like to talk. It actually turns people off. I wish someday, I wish someday that people would uh, appreciate yeast what is in the whiskey. There's a couple of producers out there that will talk about it and they do it successfully, but we as whiskey producers should talk about it more. Quite frankly, um, I have yeast strains that are in frozen culture from the 1930s, the original whiskey producers of Canada, oh, yeah, that I can get to grow. Um, but if I made a whiskey for you, would you care? Maybe this audience would care, but 99% of the people would get turned off. But I hope someday, I hope someday, I think it'll be, a, lot, a lot of it's about timing. I'll put it this way, um, Greg, that yeah. in 1998, we could not give a bottle of Lot 40 away. Oh, you could, I mean, really, nobody wanted to drink rye whiskey in 1998. It was about, more about the single malts at that, that point of time. Even in the, the uh, Amer in, in America, no. American audience? And it just started in the last two or three years how popular rye whiskey is. So it is about market yeah, timing. That's yeah. And that's why we're seeing an increased growth in lot 40s. That's what people want today. And I hope tomorrow, that's the biggest struggle as a master blender. Looking at my, I'm doing this because I'm going with my crystal ball. <laughs> What do people want 10 years from now? It's a tough question. What, what, well, but but I, have to, have to I have to think about that. And that's my yeah, legacy, sure. right? So what I put away in a barrel today, sure, sure. the next yeah, master blender is going to take credit to for. Take care of it. That's my, well, it's almost my retirement package, if you want to look. If I don't make good whiskey today, <laughs> <laughs> if I don't make good whiskey today, I, I'm not, but I think one of the, so that yeast salt, uh, that frozen yeast cultures I'm talking about, mm. maybe that's something I might do today, but the next master blender might have to take credit for it, oh, which is fine. That, that's part about leaving your legacy, right? Sorry, Dom. Yes, have, go ahead. Um, there's a question. There's a question from Luna Aaron. Um, does the rule double distilling evens out grain flavor apply to column and pot still alike? No, just two columns oh, just, still. Just okay. two columns. Column, column, column and then pot still will concentrate your flavor. Column then column uh, will strip out your flavor. Yeah, the idea of uh, having a yeast train from the 30s is great. I guess I would be hooked, says <laughs> Luna. Yes, <laughs> well, I don't know that the this audience cares, but, yeah, 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 but, yeah, but yeah, I go to the corner bar. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
Uh, moving on to my next question. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to go until the, the number 11. Uh, I, sw I, I, I swapped one because, uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you how far do you work differently? Um, no, sorry. No, you answered this one. Uh, it is known that cask management and selection by Master Blender is important for the. You're gonna. You just said the contrary, but uh, not exactly. Uh, for the final test of whiskey, what differs in Canadian whiskey, at least yours, compared to Scotch? In uh, according to you about cask management. Uh, yeah, for cask management, there's a couple of things maybe we'll talk about warehousing in Canada. So we're we're located in uh, Windsor, Ontario, Canada. It's right in the middle of the Great Lakes. We're in the middle of the continent. And what I'll always say is we're probably one of the more unique places in the world that makes whiskey, and it's due to our temperature change. Um, for us, we will get uh, very, very hot and humid in the summertime. Um and if anyone's been to Windsor, Ontario, it, it is whew, very, very hot. Uh, and it's because of the Great Lakes. They're very shallow bodies of water that dials up the humidity in the summer. But in the winter, we get very cold because of the lakes again. Lot 40 last year, I measured in February inside of our cask in our warehouse. It got down, oh, yeah, to, it got down to minus 5 degrees Celsius. Absolutely crazy. But in the summer, in the middle of July, it was 25 degrees Celsius. So we get a really extreme change of temperature. It allows that whiskey to come in and out of the barrels, allows those barrels to breathe. At our facility, we have 1.6 million barrels on site. Um, yes, it's the size of 132 hockey arenas, if there's any Canadians in the audience. Uh, you need to explain for a <laughs> Six barrels high. A lot okay. of barrels. 1.6 million barrels. But for over the seasonality, we, we feel that penetrates into that whiskey coming in allows a green apple flavor to start forming in your whiskey and because where we're located um we really do find that our highly aged whiskeys will start bringing in those flavors to to our our, our whiskeys but there's a downside mm. we'll lose three yeah, percent uh, yeah three percent of our whiskey uh every year so if you do three percent of 1.6 million barrels that's forty-eight thousand barrels a year we lose to the angel share uh, which is crazy, but it's still greedy angels. <laughs> yeah, greedy angels. Yes, <laughs> but it it really develops. We really want that flavor, and I and I think the wood is really very important uh, for us. So inside of those, even those warehouses, there's so much angel share. When our operators open up the doors to go inside them, they they're not allowed to walk inside of our warehouse. So three percent, Luna Aaron. Uh, yes, three percent. So three percent loss. Three percent loss. Uh, our, our, our workers can't walk into those warehouses. They have to, um, yeah, they have to wear oxygen monitors. Oh, really? Yes. They whoa, have to whoa, vent whoa, them whoa, out whoa. for, uh, for an hour before they walk inside the warehouse. Cause that's how much because angel the, share. The alcohol. Because the alcohol. They can get drunk just entering the warehouse. Well, no, they, they, well, not, they uh, choke if they start getting lightheaded. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's so <laughs> we, of course we, we are concerned about our yeah. worker safety. So we have a yeah, procedure sure. in place. They can't walk in there and they have to wear the oxygen It's not the monitor. same in, uh, in, uh, in Scottish. Yeah. Still. But, but you're, you're talking about cast management, but yeah, that's, yeah, a, of course. that's important of course. for us of course. Uh, in terms of having that green apple and that nice mature flavor in our highly aged whiskeys. Uh, sorry, I'm asked again because well, we did quick in the beginning about mm -hmm. the name Lot 40, uh, uh, New Drum Drinker. That's for you. Lot 40, uh, if you're just joining us, yeah. <laughs> New Dram Drinker, if you're just joining us. It was, it was named uh, from my predecessor who, who was invented the brand. His, the master blender's name was jo um, Michael Booth. He named it after his great-great-grandfather, which was Josh Bo Joshua Booth, who was given plot or lot number 40 when he came to Canada. And it was a tribute to him because he was uh, one of the original distillers in Canada. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next question. Uh, you, you, it's about the flavor wheel, where I noticed we talked about it previously. Yeah. Uh, there was no place for peat because there's no. There's a, some brands in Canada that use peat for their whiskies, uh, yeah. especially single malts. But uh, it, um, Don doesn't use peat, so it was just a question if. Yeah. Uh, there is a, a small sliver. Yeah, there's in the flavor wheel. I do put a small sliver on that where the phenols and glycols uh, stuff come out. Uh, there's only one brand that I blended uh, in uh, Canada. It was called uh, Union 52. It's J.P. Weiser's Union 52, where I put some peated uh, whiskey into it. Other than that brand, uh, it's the only one. 
It's not the direction. It's you not, no, to. no, and it's okay. not a direction that it's we do do. It's it's an interesting philosophy. Um, you got to understand your market, and I, I I believe most Canadian whiskeys are the majority don't of them. Worry. Yeah, yeah, the majority of them probably don't want the taste of peat. I'm not saying that it could ever happen. I could see it changing. Um, today, it's rye whiskeys that are very hot. Maybe some point in the future, when I'm not the master blender, peat might be something somebody would use. Interestingly enough. Canada has one of the largest peat reserves uh, in the world. Uh, obviously, one of them is because of our land mass. It's hard to get out and harvest uh, that in Canada. Maybe someday, uh, but today Canadian whiskeys really go to authentically what where we have come from, and that's using rye to give us our big bouquets. Okay, thank you. Um, I had a question that partly, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, Northern American whiskeys seem for me to lead the way today when. Uh, these last years in terms of uh, experimenting whiskey, uh, mm -hmm. like we said, grain from grain to yeast to cask, etc. Probably it's an opinion of mine, probably more than in Scotland, and you seem to confirm it prior <laughs> to that. And the good example I was going to give, it's a distillery I uh, awarded in 2016, Westland, mm. it, that dared use uh, beer uh, yeast, yeah, brewery yeast, at some point and uh, five kinds and i read recently 15 kinds of barley or oh, differently malt. worked malt malt, barley, yeah. uh, for the whiskies also introducing local oak local peat etc yeah. so why the scottish do not experiment so much i don't know and uh, do you see for canadian whiskey future uh these mm. kinds of experimentation of others yeah. what's your thoughts about experimenting well i can't comment on why scotch why yeah, they yeah, do that sure. it, probably a lot of it is regulatory and tradition mm. and probably going to their market like just yield. like selling anything yield. <laughs> yeah just like selling anything mm. they're probably appeasing to what their market is um but for us uh i do see um I do see potential with malt. I have been putting away some malt. Yeah, there's a lot of peat. And Luna asks, <laughs> you, you told me it was one of the largest peat, peat, largest peat, reserves, peat reserves, reserves in the world. Yeah. Sorry, Guillaume, <laughs> you doesn't like peat. <laughs> I, I, I don't say I don't like peat. It's it's my I, I'm making whiskey for you, um, and that's actually and then, we had some whiskeys before uh, <laughs> dinner. So yeah, with I, some peat inside, it was a bit yeah. I, I, I'm not saying that peat will ever come into Canada, but I have been putting away some single malts in the last number of years uh, that are turning out quite well right now. I don't think they're old enough to release. Uh, I've done some barley malt, and I've done a lot 40 with 100% rye malt, which is very, very interesting. I still think it's a little young to come out and play, but maybe some, of the, maybe those in the audience that are cast strength lot 40 fans, maybe we'll see it appear uh, at some point in some year as a cast strength lot 40 with 100% rye malt. Mm -hmm. Um, that does have an interesting characteristic. Nice. So we are playing with it. The other thing we are looking at too, in terms of innovation, is I'm looking uh, for. Um, very specific varieties of rye. Oh. In, in 2015, we switched out our distillery from buying commercial rye, generic rye, they call it uh, grade number two rye, to actually uh, having our farmers contract grow out specific variety. And we, oh, we've been great. using one called Brissetto rye. It was developed in Germany and uh, uh, we've had our farmers been growing in that for the last number of years. So probably in the next couple of years you're going to actually see lot 40 as a brand that's going to be exclusively using brissetto rye oh. and it's going to be more spicy oh. and you, we talked earlier about my philosophies of making whiskey because mm. i'm not standing still if i think i can make whiskey better which in this case i think i can make it better and more consistent we have switched over to a variety of rye since then, there's a couple of sister strains of, of Brissetto um, that we've been playing with as well. So we will see those in the next number of years as well. So I think that's the next evolution to Canadian whiskey. I understand that that other distillery, Westland, was dealing with malt. Maybe that's their thing. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think ours, I know, we do, sorry, we do what we do well. Yeah, and yeah. there's balconists that use different blue corn and different yeah. things. And there's also dry fly that uses triticale. Uh, and that's very com uh, common grain in, in the western part of Canada. Um, yeah, but it's, it's one I haven't played with. Uh, it's a hybrid of wheat and, and rye. 
Yeah, yeah it's there a hybrid you go, wheat because rye, no, yeah. not many people, even me, do know that. So Yeah, it's a hybrid of wheat and rye that, that they've chosen to use in their distillery. So I, I think that's the wonderful thing about uh, North American styles of whiskey. Yeah, that I think you're you're starting to experiment with a lot of these yeah. things. And uh, uh, There was a question, so yeah. done of Luna. Or, where do you find peat in Canada? Which kind of place? It's in the Canadian Shield, which is a more northern part around the Hudson Bay area. Uh, so it's, it's very okay. difficult to get into. A lot of forest, boreal forest. You need forest. moisture, right, to have peat. Yeah, and okay. to get in there and harvest it, it's not an accessible land so much in, in Canada. Good question. Okay, thank you, Luna. Uh, yeah, terroir, uh, exactly. So you're experimenting with terroir as well. That should be interesting. She says, "Yeah, there is a, a there is a terroir to whiskey. I mean, even where the whiskeys are aged. Like I said, our facility is one of the largest. In fact, we're the thunderstorm capital of Canada. We actually get twenty nine thunderstorms a year. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that's how hot and humid it is the, in the summer. But there's a terroir to whiskey wherever you are in the world. Because uh, if people are not uh, heating their warehouses, you're going to get the natural effect of the heating and cooling cycles, yeah. and that should influence how your whiskey tastes." Thank you. Very interesting. Yep. Uh, got two more questions, and then we're going to be more uh, able, maybe, to to answer yours. Uh, yeah, Canadian whiskey is getting discovered much more, uh, in my opinion, these last years. I mean, by people outside North America than in the past. Uh, where in the past, that's what I wrote on my website. People knew in Europe mostly Crown Royal, and that's it. Mm. So, because it was imported in France massively, uh, and for me, I believe it may sound biased. I don't know, but well, I believe this lot forty, for instance, play a huge role, like a locomotive, if you want, of Canadian whiskey, because it's very flavorful, powerful, and gets more popular as I see in the in the different chats of different YouTube channels. But uh, compared to the supposed demand, which seem to be weak, uh, especially about these brands, can we expect an uh, offer? Sorry, not demand, offer. Uh, can we expect an increase? We talked about this earlier. Yeah, but, no, no, uh, because it's a sensitive yeah. question uh, of imported Canadian brands so, such as yours in the future for European yeah. uh, Customers. Yeah, um, you know, just to say about one thing about a, a brand, and I'll, I'll say to your audience, and it's not an unusual statement. I mean, enjoy a whiskey that you like. I mean, each has a place its own part. There are consumers that like brands and that, that don't like brands, and each offers a different different style. Um, for our brands, uh, which is Pike Creek and Lot Forty and uh, JP Weisers, um, we are starting to uh, import in more into Europe. I know we are. Uh, heavily into the German market. So if anybody's from the Germany area, we got yes, a, Luna. <laughs> yeah, Luna, yeah, we have a JP Weiser's 10 year uh, triple barrel that is fantastic and reasonably priced. Um, oh. and, it's, and it's doing very well. Uh, at the moment, we also have Pike Creek in the German market and Lot 40. Um, Lot 40 uh, and uh, Pike Creek are going into Ireland and into the London, UK uh, as of this year. Certainly in France, uh, we're available. And I think there are more, Euro I, I know there's more European, uh, more European countries um, to come uh, with the brand uh, Lot 40. Yeah, Lot 40 since last year has been relaunched by uh, Les Nouveaux Distillateurs which is a, a, a group, a new company. Yeah. Um, we can find sometimes, I found this, uh, this Pike Creek uh, in a supermarket, uh, the 10 years old. But of course, the 10, 21 years old is... Well, so that's a beautiful rare. whiskey, but it's a totally different style uh, in how we make yeah. whiskey in comparison to, to Lot 40. This, yeah. And finish this one, the 10 years old, you can still find yeah. it's finished in rum barrels. Yeah, so with, with the brand Pike Creek, I, mean, I, I we actually find this brand's doing very, very well in the European market. It is a 10-year-old whiskey, um, of course, non-GMO. Um, it is uh, aged uh, for 10 years in a used Canadian whiskey barrel. After 10 years of aging, what we've done is we pulled it out of those barrels and we finished it in Caribbean rum casks. And it is a mix of Caribbean rum that we've done with, with this uh, whiskey here. Uh, it's finished. French Caribbean? Or? Uh, not French. I can't tell uh, you which. Okay, okay, okay. Intellectual property is an okay, issue there. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but it is a Caribbean rum casks. And. Uh, 80% of it is an amber rum, and the other 20% of the blend is a navy Whites. rum. 
Navy, Navy, Navy round. It's okay. a Navy round. Okay, that gives us an ing indication, guys. <laughs> it's a Navy round. <laughs> yes, um, that that's gone into this. Uh, it is double distilled through two column stills. What that makes is that light grain whiskey made of corn. Um, there's a little hint of rye in it that we blended in just to give it a little bit of a spiciness to it, that nut mango that we're looking for. Uh, and I find this is just a beautiful, gorgeous, smooth whiskey. Okay, we're going to have it after you finish. Oh, your you, okay, okay, we can finish this. <laughs> Cheers, yes. Cheers. Uh, I got another question, interesting question from uh, Thomas McCrory. Hi, Thomas, who's asking about experimenting. Uh, so, uh, can I ask if Don has experimented in wood other than oak, such as chestnut barrels, which is in trendy actually? Yeah, trendy. Uh, for some distilleries from Ireland. I have not in the barrel per se, but with inserts, I have done uh, things. Uh, there's a Gooderham and Warts expression uh, that is being launched in the Northern Border collection this year. Oh yeah. Uh, that, some might know about yeah, this. Yeah. So collection. those are those in Canada. Uh, we're going to look forward to uh, Gooderham Awards. It's called Hi, 49 I, Wellington. Um, again, only 300 cases are being made, but it's aged in red oak. It has a red oak insert. So if you make it from other types of wood, uh, you will have leaks. Your barrels will leak, right? So yeah. that's why I'm very tentative on trying the full barrel made or constructed of chestnut. I don't know if you're the person asking the question has has used chestnut, but, right. I, but my nervousness around it is leakage. Uh, and um, I don't, and I don't want to lose. So I'd rather deal and work with the inserts than. Uh, that's one of the problems. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, I, I, I want to give you guys whiskey. I don't want it to leak all over the floor. <laughs> um, so if you want that chestnut nuance to it, and any times too, you got to be careful when you're playing with the new woods. From what I, add. it can just be so far off. I can't this way. It can be so far off that it, it's it's so bizarre that you got to be careful that your consumer may not be looking for it too. So you got to understand your market a little bit. So, so again, if you were looking for something from our distillery, the Gooderham Awards 49 Wellington has that red oak in it. And uh, it, I find it gives you a nice uh, cedar, cedaring note to your, to your whiskey. We won't, we will you see that? Will we see that in UK? No, uh, no, no. It's no. Canada only. We gotta go. We to know Canada. we can sell them in Canada, but <laughs> until we can get our brand, our our our, our mother brands doing well, uh, those will be the times when we'll start. Yeah, seeing the I forgot races. to mention, guys, that uh, uh, here I'm Walker and Sons, for uh, which uh, Don is working, is uh, um, we can say run by Corby. Uh, Corby Spirits, and Spirits Wine, Wine, which is ultimately owned by Pernod Ricard. That's it. Pernod yeah. Ricard is yeah. the owner of uh, this the same distillery. We have in our Pike Creek, 10 years old, finished in rum barrels, guys. 42% ABV. What else can we say quickly about it? Yeah, it is It is 10 year old. It's got that rum. It's going to have that nice brown sugar. It's very distinctive notes to it. Raisins, dried figs, dried fruits, mm -hmm. island spices. Uh, and you got to get a little bit right. What I find too, here, here's a little okay. thing too. Yeah, it's always whiskey, personal, yes. guys. Yeah, this is personal. Yeah. When you're looking at Canadian whiskeys, you're going to get a warm feeling through the chest. <laughs> and that's so the rye. Not, no, 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 yeah. that's the rye. So we can say the Kentucky hug. The Canadian a, hug, right? There's a Kentucky hug and <laughs> there's a Canadian hug. hug. Okay, Canadian learning hug. something. Canadian cheers, hug, yes. Don, yes. Cheers, guys, on the chat, everyone. And those watching uh, afterwards, thank you. In advance. So when we're tasting oh, this brown whiskey, sugar, yeah, brown. yeah, when we're tasting this whiskey, the lot forty is going to have the long lingering uh, in your chest, whereas this one's not. It only it's has a sweeter. little bit of rind. It's sweeter. Yeah. A little bit, little bit of rind, and it's going to be more uh, in your uh, mouth cavity uh, as opposed through the chest, like the lot forty. Yeah, definitely sweeter. A delicate. There's still some spice and a bit of a... And that's probably that navy rum that's coming through yeah. that's giving you that, and that little black, bit of rye. Black pepper, but very sweet. Yeah. And again, it's a different Caramel. occasion. This, this whiskey's for a different occasion than what yeah. you would have for a lot 40. And that's the wonderful thing about whiskey. Oh, by <laughs> the way, uh, as we have new drum drinker on board, forgot to ask a question. I saw uh, on Twitter a beautiful picture, and I didn't have time to... Uh, Answer the brand uh, was posting this picture. Uh, do you know quickly some easy recipes of cocktails with those two? Because I think some of you yeah. guys li like to do cocktails. The lot forty, uh, we we suggest putting it into uh, old fashions or Manhattans. Interestingly enough, oh. you, interestingly enough, do you know why they call it a Manhattan? Um, if, you're, if you're to phone uh, the area code of New York, 
it's two one two two parts whiskey one part vermouth two dashes of bitters i gotta see that on the replay <laughs> <laughs> no I had, I had a bartender tell me that once and that's oh. that's not how they name it name it but that's how you can remember how oh, manhattan's cool. made two, is two zero, two one two two one two one interesting two. interesting um uh, so we suggest something like that because it's a very big spicy whiskey. You want to balance it with the sweetness from the vermouth or in an old fashioned, right? Because they put the sugar and the yeah, orange yeah, bitters yeah. into it. Um, whereas uh, this, the uh, Pike Creek, neat. I, I just personally like it after dinner. Uh, I, I like I, the packaging. I think one's uh, the best thing. I, I find this maybe in a brandy snifter or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I've seen people do the whiskey sours with it because I this maybe the sweet uh, and, the, uh, and the, the sour go well together as well. Oh, thank you. Interesting tips, guys, of uh, cocktails with uh, those things. <laughs> <laughs> it's for you, Anthony and Nikki, especially. Um, okay, again, one more question, and then we'll be maybe... Uh, it's uh, one hour almost already. We're going to uh, continue a bit. Last question, because, uh, yeah, originally this uh, live was supposed to be gathering two master blenders. Um, you, Don, and uh, John Glazer from Campus Box, um, because I thought it would be an interesting meeting to uh, organize these guys, yeah. who I believe work very differently. Uh, I don't know if you agree, you more in a scientific way, but also creative. John, in more maybe artistic, intuitive, but still very uh, cautious. Uh, each one calendar didn't fit with the other. Um, but I think there's some esteem between you guys. Uh, they salute each other uh, at a distance. And I'm going to interview John as well uh, during the Whiskey Life, guys. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought there was something interesting on these two approaches. They met already, you told me. They, yeah, we've you met, met before. John. Mm -hmm. um, I will ask the same question to John in a few days. Uh, what would you say is interesting in John Glazer's approach of blending whiskey according to you? Yeah, you say what you want. <laughs> I, I, I think John is a pi pioneer, to be honest yeah, with you. Tasted, uh, yeah, I've, we had an opportunity to taste some of his whiskeys. Uh, I think John's a pioneer uh, uh, and a trailblazer for the Scotch whiskey uh, world. I think he's kind of opened uh, the eyes of what's possible inside the Scotch uh, whiskey world. Uh, I've had some, some interesting drams of his. I think they're exceptional. Um, and I say, keep it going, John. I mean, I, I love to try new things. I'm an experimenter as well. Um, and I, I like to make whiskeys for everybody. And I think that's probably like John's philosophies are, yeah, as, are exactly, as well. Yeah, um, yeah he, mm. and he, he's probably similar to me. He, he probably listens well, um, to what the, to people at whiskey festivals online, wherever the his source of information is, because, when I'm at the Whiskey Fest, I'm going to be doing it all all weekend here in Paris. Is you know what interesting whiskeys have you had tonight? Uh, what whiskeys have you? Which ones are good? What, and I I like to see what people are drinking, because then that starts helping me what to to put away uh, uh, for later. That, that's why I know today, and that's why I'm working on on some single malts because I know that's what Ooh, people are asking. Right? Interesting, interesting. And working I on I'm that. working on the very very things of uh, very unique strains of rye. And I hope to put out, to, out some very unique things with yeast strains, right? So I listen to what the audience is saying, and, and I think it's very important. I think as a master blender, and I, and I, I think John's the same way. He probably listens to what his audience is, is reacting, what he's doing. It's very important for us to get out in the field. Yeah, yeah. Don't maybe want... get off some snobbism and yeah. of consuming maybe too yeah, elitism mean, and stuff. Yeah, uh, get out in the field and ask. Yeah. Ask yeah, people. Yeah, I think yeah. I think it's a mistake for a master blender to stay in his laboratory and blend. Yeah, rings. most of them do. We got to give credit <laughs> to Don to to come to the. Uh, honestly, it's not bias common. It's uh, I I seen it in many uh, whiskey shows, mm -hmm. guys. Uh, there's no master blender there. I saw Richard Patterson several times. Yes, but except from him, we don't see much of them. Even the Scots. You don't see much of them. The Americans doesn't do not hey. come as well. Uh, so uh, it's a great opportunity yeah. to see someone like Don, who's so uh, knowledgeable, and also to uh, to agree to go live on a wee channel like mine. So uh, really, uh, it's much appreciated. And uh, I hope I think the guys, the people who will attend his masterclass, as you may see 
uh, there already in my life. I am sure they're going to learn a lot of things, not only about Canadian whiskey, but how basically Canadian uh, whiskey, sorry, is made. Uh, yeah, I, 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 again, to go back to the point, I think it's a mistake for a lot of blenders uh, or distillers to stay in their offices or stay in their laboratories and, and not go out and ask what, what people are drinking. It's a shame. Um, I think that that's how we keep in tune to our audiences. Uh, and man, I'm, like I said before, I, I, I sincerely mean it. I'm making whiskey for you, for you, for you. And uh, and I I really want to put that out there that uh, if you if you guys are in the audience you happen to meet me uh, please come up and have a chat I, I really would like to get your insights on, on what the future of whiskey holds and I like I said I want to make it better I'm always trying to make whiskey better oh we got some comments here okay uh, Luna says John Glazer should move to Ireland he might be experimenting more there fewer rules. And uh, not to Canada, so we won't get any juice. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm hoping it will come, Maluna. I'm hoping it will yeah, come. Yeah, to visit, to visit, <laughs> not to work. Um, it, we're, again, we're slowly trying. It's tough to build uh, whiskeys uh, globally. Oh. I mean, they're so competitive. The market is so competitive. I have a more personal question. Yep. Um, I, I promise I didn't ask no one to, to uh, before to ask questions about me. Um, New Drum Drinker asks, Hey Don, has Greg's Whiskey Guide got any whiskeys in his collection that surprised you? Greg Hello. is a good blender. <laughs> he was oh, blending. thank you, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> Greg, uh, I didn't ask for that. <laughs> I, it, it, that's you know it's funny you ask that um, I'm starting to see more and more uh, consumers uh, starting to blend their own whiskeys with what they have in their own inventories and uh, Greg's not the first one that I uh, that I've met that's done that uh, one of my fun uh, fun things I like to try is when people come up to our whiskey booths at the whiskey fest oh give me your favorite whiskey well I said well, my favorite whiskey's not here and well what do you mean well it's it's uh, my favorite whiskey is uh, Wiser's Legacy it's called. <laughs> But I said, don't go away, I'll mix it for you. And so what I'll do is I'll take one third lot 40, two thirds of Weiser's 18 year uh, and blend it together. And uh, and that's that's my favorite, favorite whiskey. Oh wow, yeah, and I think people see see that, you know, you mean you can blend two together? Yeah, that's so you would do that at Trini and Yeah, well. yeah, you, you can do that. that. I mean, and I say, I mean, and it's that's the fun part about making whiskey. Who, who says you can't blend certain things together and the flavors? Uh, this might go well together, this might <laughs> Thanks, not work. That's guys. the fun thing. I, that's what I do in a lab. We got some compliments. Yes. Um, um, Luna Aaron is from Germany. She asks uh, if you will be at Inter Whiskey Show in Frankfurt. Yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will. So, Luna, you will see Don very soon. Good. Yes, uh, <laughs> that's uh, about a month and a half from now. Yes. Yes, that is a good whiskey festival, too. There's lots of nice oh, whiskey uh, I don't know, Alan, if I am in the white screen. We seem to be in a small screen. I don't know. Uh, let me try this. I don't know if it's different. Is it any better there? Or shall we go back here? Uh, no, here is for one people, so no, no. Uh, well, as I don't know, I won't change because it's just my first live, uh, no, no uh, impromptu, but programmed, and uh, I have a special guest, so I don't want to experiment too much. <laughs> Uh, sure, we'll do better next time, uh, technically as well. Um, well, I had a question also. Uh, no, it was not about my whiskeys, but it, whiskeys from my collection you might have liked. But <laughs> let's That's for another, it, another episode. Le, let's <laughs> leave it like that. Um, what else can we see? Questions, no questions for now. Um, I would like to share with you, even if I don't have much, a sample from George again. Thank you so much, George. Uh, dissertation, I really no. want to have a... Uh, yeah, I, I you want to talk about dissertation? Oh, yeah, we, no, we need to We need to talk, to talk about, about dissertation. This. I don't right. have the bottle yet. I'm struggling to get a bottle. It's getting very rare, but it's a, a whiskey, guys. I have to tell you a bit about this. Uh, I'm searching my notes. Apologies. I, I can tell you yeah, about yeah, dissertation. Oh, yeah, yeah. if you want me to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, because it's a, it's a, a lovely name for a whiskey and very weird at the same time. It is very. So weird. I'll let you go down while I'm yeah, okay. searching so for my notes. JP Weiser's dissertation was launched in uh, Ontario, Canada, exclusively uh, about two years ago for a rare release for Father's Day. The LCBO, which is the Liquor Control Board of Ontario, had approached me. Can can you make a rare release for us? Well, at that time. I was running some experiments, but they hadn't fully aged out at that at that point. Um, so I said, "Well, what I have here is I have 78 barrels left over from doing my PhD in 2012. When I complete, that's when I completed my PhD. Uh, the whiskeys uh, were about 14 years of age at that point. And I said, oh, I got 78 barrels, but it's just a mix mash of uh, of rye whiskeys and, and pot distills and column distills, and it was aged in." in oak barrels or it had a four level char or was aged in barrels at a two level char it was just by kiln yeah sorry <laughs> yes it just sorry. had a mix mash of everything so i put all 78 barrels together made a blend and the lcbo took it they took it now the interestingly part about this is there's a uh, blender that works for me scott stay hi scott uh one of the best blenders in the world um, and one of the things when we're talking about making whiskeys, the last thing you decide is how much uh, water do you add or what is the final strength of alcohol do you want it to be. And we argued for a matter of days saying, you know, this should be at 48%, should be at 43%, the original strength of Canadian whiskeys. And finally, I went, to, I came to my office one day and I said, Scott, this should be at 46.1. He goes, why do you want a 46.1? I don't quite understand why you want that. If you add up the like carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen has its own weight. And if you add up all the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in the molecule ethanol, it adds up to 46.1. So the final strength of J.P. Weiser's dissertation was 46.1% alcohol. Uh, it matches the molecular weight of ethanol. Um, very few whiskeys in the world has that strength. There are a few out there, but very little. So we, we entered this, this whiskey uh, just went like that because, uh, you know, Dr. Don's PhD in a bottle. I, I, a personally, I personally have 12 bottles of my own at home oh. uh, because that, that's it. There's none, none left. And yeah. uh, um, so go quick, guys. Go if quick. Like, if, if you... Yeah, you mentioned there might be some on whis whiskey exchange. Shh, yeah, yeah. Uh, then I want one. <laughs> Pick one for me, please. Then. Anyway, this we'll the world uh, arrange something. The world whiskey warrants uh, named this the uh, top blended whiskey in the world rare release mm. in 2017. Well, I gave it a 92, but it's uh, not a confirmed score because I they're still left here. <laughs> yes. And I wanted a bottle to assess. It's very rye forward, so it's going to have that big spice. It's going to have that warm Canadian hug. It's got a. But dare I say? Sorry to interrupt you. Yes. Don't, it is for me, I think I wrote this down. Um, I, want, I want to read my conclusion. Um, once finished the tasting of this whiskey, uh, tasted several times, God bless you, George. Uh, I had the feeling I just tasted a great Canadian whiskey and a great whiskey period. If I had to summarize what, what is a Canadian whiskey refinement or excellence, in one whiskey, I will choose this one. A dissertation like this one, I want more of it. I know its creator said it won't be repeated, so... Well, I'm not doing another PhD, <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> I tried. No, uh, Three hours of my life, I don't want to be... No, seriously, <laughs> I, I got on the palette um, the oak on the center. Beautiful oak as a, a essential, as a spinal column. Um, yeah. Only oh, here to good. enhance the other notes. The palate is very faithful to the nose with a pastry sensation, the caramel, there's also milk, chocolate, noble walnuts. There's also sweet spices, uh, same on the nose. Sorry, I go a bit quick. Cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, um, honey, a hint of wax. Uh, but what strikes me the most now is some unexpected luxuriant floral and fruity notes. I get the rose and rhubarb that makes it so special and fit closely to the precious wood notes that are now coming through. Maybe the influence of its dry component. This is now a clear reminder for me of the luxuriant lot 40 cast strength for these floral and fruity notes in particular. A few drops of water uh, will elate the, allow the silky, elate, sorry, it must be the word. Uh, silky and sexy notes temper the whiskey in a great woody, floral, and fruity harmony. 
<laughs> yeah, it's inspired me a lot. You know what that <laughs> sounds like? There's a lot going on, and there should be the way the way this whiskey. So is made cheers too. for cheers. creating cheers, such eh? a beautiful yes, whiskey, yeah. and if you can taste it, guys, go for it. Yeah, so Luna will try to get it, and if Luna, please, if you can get one for me, we arrange <laughs> this between us. Thank you. And yeah, let me know what you think when we see each other at the at um, Inter Whiskey. Yeah, I'd be very curious. Oh, I love that. It's, it's, so it's like, you know, if I had to pick up two whiskey of yours today, I would have the Lot 40 cast strength yeah. and this one, and that's it. That tells me you like the rye, right? The, the, yeah. They're both very rye for whiskeys. In the case of Lot 40, it's 100% rye. Um, there's That one's very dynamic, very bold. Uh, but the Canada Day was wonderful with a different profile. Yeah. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about Canadian whiskey. <laughs> You can make it light. You can make it. You can go on more on the sweet side. Go more on the spicy side. And it's. I wouldn't want to be a blender anywhere else in the world other than the, than a Canadian whiskey. Yeah, Luna says, "Wait for me to get one." <laughs> She's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, Gohab says he was lucky enough to find two oh, bottles I'm... in Ottawa last spring. Oh, I'm glad he did. I'm glad he found some. Yes. Sorry, uh, New Drum Drinker says, uh, sorry if you've gone quiet, but we are both a bit drunk. <laughs> Enjoying the great chat. Thank you, Anthony and Nikki. Yeah. Love you guys. <laughs> yeah, and hi, Mashburn. Sorry, I missed some people on, on the chat because, uh, yeah, Don is very generous in his whiskeys, but also in explaining his whiskeys and uh, it's important. yeah I, I think it's very important and to even go back to talking about john uh yeah. and i think and we talked about it uh, earlier that uh we like to be truthful we like to be honest in exactly what we're doing transparent um and yeah. very transparent what we're doing if you want to know the boiling point or the temperature or the pressure of whatever i mean uh we're, we're, i think we're like that and i you think see, uh, if you see the color of the dissertation no uh, caramel added right uh no no i don't add caramel if i'm doing okay. it caramel is something i won't add if i'm only going to make it once if i know it's going to be made multiple times i'll have caramel because it'll sit on a yeah. shelf and um, you would get one batch to a lot that'll be a little bit off in color so that's usually my philosophy when it comes to caramel coloring and earlier on don you told me something very interesting and unusual about chill filtering can you repeat it for the the audience please? Uh, the, the chill filtering we do chill filter most 99 percent of our whiskeys if it's very high in strength, like a cast strength, there's no point in chill filtering it because uh, the, the uh, esters uh, won't fall uh, out of uh, solution. Uh, for our whiskeys here, we will chill filter at four degrees Celsius. That's how low we go. We don't get into the minus uh, Celsius uh, for our chill filtering. Well, damage whiskeys. Just, right? If you yeah, go I mean, yeah, it, it's, I, I, I believe it does. I mean, we go to four degrees Celsius and we really have never had a consumer complaint or a concern or a worry about it. Mm. Um, I, I mean, and we've always done it that way just because that's the way we've always done it. Um, no, I have a very biased question. Uh, yeah. Do the European or French audience is more demanding about all these than the Northern America? Oh, about, about the technical de details, you mean? Uh, yeah, not only, but the fact uh, we may want more uh, chill filled not chill filter, non -chill filter whiskey whiskeys. and non-card whiskey, or do the Northern American people do And it's care. about different. I think it's more about the educated consumer that usually oh, asks yeah. for the, it's, the I've seen it both in North America and Europe, yeah. uh, asking for non-chill filtered. And to be honest with you, you'd be t really high pressed to really tell the difference, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I've, yeah, I've done my own sensory. Yeah, I'd be yeah. very, very difficult to, to tell it. Uh, you'd have to, I think, have a very trained tongue. Um, certainly in the nose, I don't think you could tell the difference. Mm. But it's certainly in appearance, that's why you do it. It turns cloudy. Yeah, uh, you, yeah, don't, yeah, you don't yeah, want yeah. your whiskeys to turn cloudy, or you don't want calcium oxalate falling out. That's, it's sediment Hi, on you. There's Matt joining us from Ear Whiskey. Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. Um, you don't want calcium oxalate forming in your, in your whiskeys either, so you, you want to make sure they're chill filtered because those things can happen as well. So you don't want a haze uh, coming in from, uh, and then it doesn't look very appealing. Uh, so those are risks when you're doing a non-chill filtered whiskey. I, uh, we had that with the JP Weiser 35 year. Um, last year we did a non-chill filtered of it. And then people would look at it, and especially highly aged whiskeys, you're going to start seeing the haze. With it's a 50 ABV. Yeah. yeah. yeah you're going to start seeing yeah, the full bottle. You might start seeing a, a haze, right? Uh, 
So you, you do want to chill filter them. You don't want to want that looking at it, uh, looking that I'm way. I'm listening to you and enjoying the, the... Yeah, I enjoyed mine so much. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very beautiful whiskey. Uh, thanks to George for sending some over. And I hope you mm -hmm. hope really can get you a bottle at some point. Oof, difficult from Canada to send anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. We managed know. to send samples, but and, to send bottles. Even from country to country, you know, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, becoming. Yeah. But you're starting to see e-commerce start to, start to happen more and more. Okay, that's good. That's running from one hour, 14 minutes, uh, 14 minutes now. Uh, I think we're going to maybe, what you say, 10 minutes, half an Ten hour? Minutes? Because you, you, yeah. you, you had the Ten jet more minutes. Lag. 10 more minutes, okay? 10 more minutes. We'll go 10 more minutes. Yes, okay, so guys. If, the jet lag. Yes. Yeah, he's a bit of a jet lag. You have a let <laughs> down sleep a bit. Uh, he came yesterday, so... Uh, um, Yesterday or yeah, yeah. Yesterday, yesterday. So guys, if you have a few more questions, and we are gonna finish up there. And thank you very much for watching already. And whoops, I'm not on in, but I, I wanted <laughs> Don to have the more <laughs> more well, <I> space <laughs> <laughs> because uh, because of the table we have the the, the the drinks here and we have. I I'm just if I can finish if that's if there's no more questions. I oh, uh, there's something I don't know that Alan is saying. It's uh, it seems to be the thing to exchange uh, discreetly the whiskies. Uh, ask Don to send you a snow globe. What is a snow globe? I don't know. The snow globe is when the non-chill filtering uh, the whiskies. That's what will happen. Is you'll get a snow globe uh, effect inside of your inside of your whiskies. If you, it takes a while to start forming, but he's right. It, it does look like a snow globe. If especially if it's very old or it has a lot of new wood in it, the the uh, formation of the oxalate will start showing up. Well, but I, like I think globe. it was a joke with the. Uh... Put some whiskey in it to see. Oh, it. oh, well, maybe the snow globe. <laughs> oh, I say to sell it. No, sometimes I've had people say that the, the when you're non chill, Philip, your whiskey looks like a snow globe. Oh, okay. That's what I thought he was saying. No, we no, no, no. I that. think it was, to, <laughs> it's a joke to find a way to send whiskeys from. Call it a snow globe. Okay, I got you. Well, that's how but you But I do still things. don't know what it is. But <laughs> see, you're always learning something. Yeah. You're always learning something. <laughs> Uh -huh. Actual snow globe says uh, Luna. <laughs> so, I don't still don't know what it's it funny. Is. It's funny because it did reminisce, and I've seen uh, cons consumers talk about that. It looks like a snow globe. Interesting how he mentioned that at that particular time. So, any more question, guys, before we finish this up? All right. So, if there's no questions, so yeah, some, somebody we, might pop on the screen here. But yeah. what I might, must say is that yeah, just uh, a conclusion about yeah uh, the, the conclusion about Canadian whiskey. Canadian whiskey and uh, I, I mean I think Canadian whiskey is a, a great whiskey category to play in as a master blender. Um, I invite your audience to pick up one of these mm. flavor wheels. Uh, I talked about it before. Canadian whiskey is the most innovative, creative, adaptable style of whiskey there is. All we have to do is be made of grain, fermented, aged, and distilled in Canada, aged in a wooden barrel of less than 700 liters for a minimum of three years and a minimum of 40% alcohol. That's it. I want to be creative. I want to adapt. Um, I, I think we can make extraordinary quality products that are award winning. Um, I really think Canadian whiskey is diverse and it really represents Canada as a nation. Um, I would please invite uh, your audience to pick up a bottle of Lot 40 or Pike Creek uh -huh. or JP Weiser's. Um, and certainly I would invite, encourage the audience if you want to learn more about what we're doing or where I'm at, I can be found at, at CDN, that's Canadian, CDN Whiskey, Whiskey Without an E, Doc. Um, and uh, please follow me. I, I follow, follow you back. And, uh, and if you have any more questions on our, our fine products and where they're distributed, uh, throw me a note. And I'm usually pretty good uh, on, on responding uh, as to what we're doing. And I appreciate you tonight, Greg. For okay. having me, it was, Thank you so much. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was fantastic. being there, thank, it's yeah, a no, real no. honor and a privilege. Yes. And uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, and thank you for your support and for your question uh, on the chat. We uh, appreciated it, and I uh, hope you had a nice moment talking about Canadian whiskies. So thank you very much, and see you. Bye bye. Oh, no. And broadcast. I hope.